A thing of beauty is a sight to behold. Sounds like something you might read somewhere in a poem in high school. But have you ever wondered what is beauty? What makes something pleasing to the eye? And how do we as humans attain that beauty? Well, medicine helps us with a branch of medicine known as aesthetics. Sometimes controversial, but always topical. What makes a person beautiful? One's eyes. A good skin. Definitely a good skin. I think the smile. Their skin tone, what they wear, the long eyelashes, the... Mm, like a good figure, you have to look after yourself. I love a smile because if you smile, the whole world smiles along with you. My most beautiful asset. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think my most beautiful asset is my height. I like to look after myself, so my, my physique. My most beautiful asset is my brain. I say my eyes. <laughs> yeah, I think it's what's inside. With me is Dr. Rato Masimola, Dr. Tswaledi Papa, who is a dentist with a passion in cosmetic dentistry. And Lisa Rally, welcome to Doctor's Orders, Thank everyone. You, yes. So what's the definition besides me of beauty? <laughs> Well, if you're talking aesthetics, the yes. literal meaning is eyes. Yes. So if you're saying, you know, aesthetically pleasing is that which is pleasing to the eye. Okay. But we all know beauty actually is subjective yes. and it is in the eye of the beholder. If you're talking medically, you may talk about proportions, you know, does the one side mirror the other perfectly yes. and is everything in line and white sizes. But that's not <laughs> like, I've held a mirror sometimes in between, like with my face. I don't look like that. I'm not proportional or sy symmetrical. Well, in terms of dentistry, yes. um, a beautiful smile would be, it's all about your teeth, it's all about how they enhance your whole for each facial profile, so we define it in terms of that. And from your perspective there, Lisa? Mm, slightly different approach. I would say it's more something that is completely authentic and ultra confident. You can get an average looking person but that radiates beauty because they look so special and they're just so confident about who they are. And to me that's beautiful. So internal beauty mm -hmm. radiates. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, what are the various types of cosmetic procedures? Out there. Well, you can divide them into two. You know, the surgical ones where you actually have to go and get a bit of surgery, yes. or you get the non surgical ones where it varies from you know, peels or chemicals being used, and you know, the wraps and laser things like that. So, if you're looking here, okay. we've got that would be fat, yes. so liposuction, <laughs> yes. sucking out fat. That is a surgical procedure. A surgical procedure, procedure yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Let me see if I can do my. Obviously, and that's exactly it's a little what bit happens. more sophisticated than this. Yes, and it's a much <laughs> bigger syringe. Not exactly what happens. And there's a needle involved. <laughs> and then they basically draw it out. And, and then they chuck it out. Or they can actually put it somewhere. back into yeah. your body somewhere. Yeah. If you yeah. maybe sucking out from your tummy into your calves, into your bum. And then here you're looking at the breast implants, okay? This would be silicon, this would be saline. Yes. Okay, so you obviously you can get different sizes depending on your need. But with breast surgery, please remember that this also reconstructive is not only for augmentation, it can also be for reduction yes. if we have problems with you know particularly large boobs mm -hmm. and they they, they the they're having back problems. Back problems mm -hmm. and yeah. You can't exercise so, if you've got large breasts. I mean yes. exactly. it really inhibits you. So that was the surgical procedures. Now mm -hmm. in terms of the non surgical procedure, for example, filler mm -hmm. or boat. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, fillers are different from Botox. Yes. With fillers, you're using a silicone-based product yes. to inject into the gaps of the wrinkles or where you think there needs a filling. So, for example, if this would your, be... If your wrinkled age skin. A wrinkled age skin. And you plump it up with a filler. With a filler. You know, and going back to um, Botox, you also have the similar looking skin, yes. but you want to smooth it out by paralyzing those muscles that are actually giving you the wrinkles. Yeah. And, but not to forget the medical uses of Botox, you know, to improve people's quality of life. For severe neck spasms, other back spasms, or chronic pain arising from those spasms, you paralyze those muscles. Severe sweating in the palms, in the underarms. So there are other uses when people think um, plastic surgery. There's yes. actually more to it than that. There's then a that. plastic bit, which is the aesthetics, and it's also the reconstructive mm -hmm. bit, which is more medical treatment of certain things. Lisa, in terms of the people that you see who've mm -hmm. had liposuction, what are the problems you've experienced? A lot of the time, they're actually quite disappointed. So before somebody ever considers doing liposuction, you know, rather exercise it off. Um, but if you've exercised it off and you've done everything and you slim everywhere else and you've got pockets of fat that are completely stubborn, 
vegan. Then I'd say go for liposuction. If you are suffering from an emotional eating disorder, you're filling a void, you have an issue when it comes to food, and you're likely to gain the weight back, right. then don't consider liposuction because you're going to take it away from one place, and when you gain it back, it's going to just redistribute somewhere else. And, and may cause more problems. Yeah. Mm. In terms of dentistry, it's a lady, uh, what are the various procedures out there? And a lot of the times, it depends on what the patient consults about. Yeah. Um, you get people complaining about their smile being too gummy or um, their teeth not being too white. And because of all the media stuff that we're getting, um, people are always wanting to I want to look Hollywood. Smile. Yeah, so you get a lot of that. You get a lot of people that have never been happy with their teeth because they're crowded, they want them well aligned and everything. Yes. So there's a lot of um, adult braces being done. There's a lot of technology in terms of veneers. They've gotten thinner. You get veneers that go over like a cap over your teeth that can adjust things like minor crowding, minor, minor tilting. You get a lot of people doing implants for missing teeth and stuff. Yes. So people don't have to have a gap that you never, you don't, you've never liked. You can also, you can always fix that. So there's quite a lot that's happening, and there's there's a lot that's available. And yeah, there's cost implications, of course. But then you can achieve the kind of. But you say the veneers are much thinner now, so they won't look thinner. like your teeth. Are they feel more natural. Yeah, they feel more natural now. A lot of technology has been invested around getting mm. more, moving more towards the functionality as well as the aesthetic part of things. And you get a combination of all these treatments, veneers, crowns, and braces to get to a point where you achieve the smile that you want. So there's a lot of options in terms of uh, aesthetics. But now, when do you decide you need to do it, and when do you decide you must avoid it because there are financial implications, there are psychological implications? I'm always going to rather push the prevention rather than the cure. Yes. And like I mentioned earlier, if you have tried everything, then you're going, and for things like rhinoplasty and breast reductions and enhancements, no amount of crunches, lunges, um, or avocado is going to fix that. Yes. Um, there's something that needs medical attention. But if you can fix it, and those that are watching the show that are in their 20s and 30s, where there is a chance to make a, a real impact on your, the effects of aging, yes. then I would suggest doing a few things. The mm. first is exercising, and there's things that you can do that really help. Strength training to keep the body firm and solid. It's not always that your, your muscle, as, that your skin has lost all its elasticity and collagen. That's it's awesome that your done. muscles have broken down so much that your skin hangs loose. Yes. So you've got to fill your skin, and then when it comes to nutrition, water, making sure that you stay hydrated, having oils in your diet, so yes. your good omegas, like your nuts, your seeds, your avocado, every day will help with good hair, skin and nails. And then when it comes to aging, you want to introduce antioxidants into your diet. Talking about skin care as well, well, to avoid or delay aging, sun, yeah, sun avoid, avoid the mm. sun and also lifestyle habits like alcohol and smoking mm. also have an effect mm. on the skin. You know, Lisa mentioned dryoplasty. Those who are interested to know what that is, it's the you know, traditional nose job. Yeah, you they're doing at me. They're working. Yeah, looking at me. <laughs> It's the traditional nose job. I have a deviated septum, so I might have to go for yeah. that. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about risks um, involved, apart from the, the financial implications, you know, if you're going to have liposuction because you think you're too big, yes. sometimes the surgeons won't undertake that without you losing some weight first because first. it's not healthy or it's not safe for you to go mm -hmm. under anesthesia. Um, that's the one thing. But also, if you have medical conditions, that you know prevent you or put you at a higher risk of going under the knife anesthetic. because I mean anesthetic there is always a risk to anesthetic yes. so these things should not be taken lightly you know you have to weigh up is, is there an, a more better non-invasive way of dealing with this than a quick fix mm. which might actually just recur and you know there are finances remember that if you have a medical funder they're not going to pay for cosmetics yes. because it's unless it's life-threatening so lady any final thoughts um, to me, it always boils down to um, it being a holistic approach. You yes. have to obviously, because aesthetic enhancement has got everything to do with what you put into your body. Yes. There are certain things that you can do about how you look, like um, changing your smile, like I said. Um, there's all sorts of cosmetic, um, surgical and non-surgical um, things that you can do. But more than anything, it's all about taking care of the inside and then um, enhancing the outside as and when you please. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us on Doctor's Orders and sharing your insights about beauty, both inside and outside. Okay. Aesthetic procedures might be something your favorite celebrity does during their holidays, but is it something that you would want to do? We took a look at a well-known aesthetic doctor's daily routine and posed him the question of which are the safest and the most popular procedures in South Africa. 
Dr. Tony van der Marwe is an award-winning clinician with a special interest in aesthetic medicine. She currently practices in Cape Town and explains what are some of the popular and common procedures requested by her patients. The most common thing that we see is probably a combination of Botox and fillers, so your combination of liquid facelift and then adding in Botox as well. Botox has been used now basically since about 1996. It's great for your dynamic, active wrinkles. Only problem with Botox, it's got to be done every three to four months. It doesn't last forever. As far as fillers go, um, they are basically considered dermal fillers. Um, they are either injected into the dermal area or into the deep volume loss areas as well. So they are for volume replacement. They don't affect the way muscles move or anything like that. While Botox and fillers are sometimes viewed negatively, they do in fact have many positive benefits. The key is making sure they are administered correctly by a professional. In terms of Botox and fillers, the great thing about them is that they are easy treatments. They are generally almost always effective. Um, and people get fabulous results um, with no downtime, which is great. The other thing that we see a lot of is obviously um, people are staying in the corporate world a lot older, they're retiring a lot later, so they want to compete with their fellow young counterparts and that's where Botox and fillers come in as well. You know, it can really take a couple of years of their life and give them that confidence they need to stay around and be competitive.